Okay, students, welcome to the introduction to the class to Calculus 1 at CCD Fall 2020 semester. My name is Brad Sullivan. I'll be the person who is teaching the class this semester, and I have a lot of experience in teaching online classes. I've been teaching online Calc 1 for about two years. Uh, I have been teaching for over 30 years. I've been at CCD for since 1999. So I got a lot of experience. I know a lot about technology, and that seems to help students quite a bit in an online class. So what I'm going to do is just kind of navigate through D2L and kind of show you how you begin, what to expect from the class, just a few highlights of the syllabus and uh, web work and a few other things. So when you get on to um, D2L, one of the first things I want you to be sure you're clear on is you know, the instructor information, uh, generally, since I'm not in my office for a fall semester, I may be in just two days a week just for a few hours, uh, but mainly you don't want to really address my office phone. You can uh, just call me on cell phone or you can text me. So this is my personal cell phone. Do not hesitate to send me a text message or something if you have a quick question. I'm used to students during this pandemic to just giving out my cell phone and uh, helping students keep in track that way, and that's fine. Um, so the uh, office hours, one thing that I'll have this semester, I have office hours where you can meet me live, face-to-face, -face, remotely on WebEx. So during these times, you can simply click on the WebEx link, and we can interact, and uh, you can get some individual help that way. Uh, if these office hours don't work well for you, then um, you can also schedule some times with me then, okay? All right, so <laughs> just to begin with, I want to show you what to, uh, to navigate. I try to make things very clear as to what's due and what you're expected to do each week. So what you're always going to look at is the content button above. Um, you want to be sure to know how to navigate through this very well. And there will be course modules. And uh, really all you got to do to start this week is just kind of go through the course modules. And I'll explain what you need to do there. I'll explain about the online textbook and web work, syllabus and that kind of thing there. So let's just kind of go through what I want you to know with the course modules. So I put these up week by week. Uh, I try to do about, have the next week available too in case you want to work ahead. So you just click on week one and what it'll have is just general information about what you're going to be doing this week. It'll have what sections we're going to cover, what work I expect you to do and so forth with due dates. All right. So it'll be kind of a checklist of things that you need to go through each week. Okay, so you want to begin by looking at the syllabus. I'm not going to talk much about the syllabus during this uh, introduction because I want you to read that, go over it yourself first, and then you can ask questions about things that, you're, that you need some clarification about. And uh, the other thing is I've got a schedule. Uh, we have a 15-week semester, so I tend to block things in five weeks. Typically, uh, you know, maybe four or five weeks, uh, your first test falls on week five. That's why I'm doing that. So you can go through and look at the schedule. And in an online class, we stay pretty well straight to the schedule. It'll again tell you when things are due, what sections you're supposed to do. So this right here would be a great thing to just print out and put somewhere. And then you could even work ahead a little bit if you wanted to into the next five weeks, okay? Um, so after you go through the syllabus and look through the schedule, then a um, couple of things you'll be doing. You'll be doing a syllabus quiz. So after you read the syllabus, just uh, go over and take the syllabus quiz. Uh, it's uh, very simple, I think, just 15 questions or something like that. And um, you should be able to go through, most of it's multiple choice or true and false. And then you should be able to go through and take the quiz and uh, then let me know if you have any questions about anything on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let's see. Uh, 
we got syllabus quiz and then discussions this week. You'll always kind of have this discussion tab, and we'll have those for most weeks. There's an introduction uh, link, so if you click on that, that'll take you directly to the discussion board, and you're just going to introduce yourself. All you got to do is just start a new thread. These are the kind of things I want you to tell me about yourself. What is your area of studies, your goals? Have you had calculus? Did you take college algebra, pre-calculus? What did you take before this class? Have you been in an online class or an online math class before? And then just uh, how many hours a week will, will you study? Um, one thing I'm going to say right now is this is a five credit hour class. So typically in a five credit hour class, we expect students to spend a minimum of 15 hours per week on the class. So that's going to be working on assignments, viewing instructional videos, and things, and 15 is a minimum. And this class is a lot of work because it's a five credit hour class, so be prepared for that type of workload. It depends on how quickly you do assignments, okay? So um, that's something to be expected. All right, back uh, again on the discussion board, uh, back on week one modules. The other thing that I'll have you do, I like to start my classes off by having students watch a uh, NOVA video. And a lot of times in Calculus 1 versus my business calculus class, a lot of students in Calc 1 are going on to take Calc 2 and Calc 3 and differential equations, maybe, depending on your major. So there's a little bit better understanding coming in about the power of mathematics. Uh, but what this, this does, if you click on the link, uh, it'll take you through. There's a video on here. And... Um, then uh, you just interact, uh, write a paragraph about it. So let me click on that link again and see what happens here. There it is. Okay, so it goes to the website Daily Motion. It is a um, about a 55-minute video, and um, and it goes over it. It's, it basically asks the question: Is math discovered or invented, or is it a combination of both? So as you watch the video. I want you to think about, do you think math is an invention, a human invention, a discovery? In other words, is math already there or, or all of these th relations and things that we learn like pi and things like that? Is it already really there built into the universe? Uh, and it shows a lot of things in here that maybe you haven't seen before. Math is literally everywhere. And I think one of the uh, people on this video says that the universe isn't made of math, it is math. So that's kind of an interesting thing to think about. So I'll have you do that, and then back, once you kind of get through the syllabus and the discussion, then what you do, the way you get your instruction in this class is through note handouts and viewing videos. Uh, so generally, <laughs> when you click on the notes, I'll have a Word document, and I'll have a PDF. So I recommend that you always download this on your computer. Just open it in a browser or whatever, but download it and print it after you've downloaded it. So the first thing that we'll be doing this week is sections 2.1 and 2.2, where you're working with um, the idea of a limit. And that's how you always start calculus, you learn about the idea of a limit. So you want to print that out, and you want to print out the 2.2 also. Those are the things that you're going to be doing in this first week. Now, there's a video link that goes along with everything. So um, what you're required to do is to print out the notes, and then you're required to watch the video and take notes and turn your notes in. Some students hate that I have you do that, but I want to tell you something that generally I have really successful classes. I don't have high failure rates. The students who tend to fail my class are students who don't do what they're supposed to do. I mean, they don't uh, do their homework. They don't view videos and stuff like that. If you do the things I ask you to do, I think you'll have a good online educational experience and you'll learn very well, just as well as you would in a face-to-face -face class. So when you're doing 2.1, you click on the YouTube video. This is a pre-recorded video uh, that I have made uh, sometime in the past. It's about this is about 47 minutes. This would be about like you know 
a, a typical Calc 1 class is two hours and 40 minutes uh, if you meet two days a week. So this would be like about, you know, a third of a class, of one class. So you click on that, you watch that, and then this will basically take you through. I start with a guitar intro sometimes. That sounds exactly like the song I played at the beginning of this video. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm a guitar player and I've been playing for like 40 years. I started in 1979 and uh, when I had long hair and curly perm and played in rock bands and I did that for about 10 years and then finally decided to uh, change the lifestyle and become a professor <laughs> instead. During all that time when I was in rock bands, I was a student at University of Oklahoma, where I'm from, and and got through a master's degree in mathematics. So decided to finally I'll get a real job and uh, start teaching and actually have a reliable income. So anyway, you are, are uh, going to be watching the video, taking notes uh, as you go along like that, and you'll do that for each section. So this is something you'll get used to in the class is doing that frequently, okay? Uh, so do the notes, do the videos. I'll tell you how to turn stuff in here in a, in a minute. And the last stuff is um, uh, web work. I'll talk a little bit about where that is. So web work is free. The nice thing about it is it's a free resource, so you don't have to buy a textbook or anything in this class. You just use the web work. And you can access it in the module or you can access it at web work homework. And the textbook, you probably won't need to review the textbook that much. If you watch the videos and take notes, you're kind of creating your own textbook in a sense. So you might not need to view the textbook, but it is there. So if you click on this textbook link, um, then basically it'll take you to the link. We use this open educational resource, uh, which is a great thing because it's free to you and Teachers across the world are trying more and more to create free resources for students to help control this out of control debt situation that students are getting themselves in, in in college. So this will basically, you can look at the table of contents, you can look at every section that I cover uh, if you need to. So that's there for you to review if you feel like you need to, okay? And then on... Um, Web work. There's one new feature of web work that I'm kind of excited about this semester, and I think I've got everything set up. So if you click on web work homework, all I've got put up is the first section, 2.1. And typically, I'll have a specific due date, like this is due 827, which I think is next Thursday. My assignments tend to either be due Thursday or Sunday. And uh, you just click on that, and you're required to do all of these problems and, uh, and run through these. Now, I do take a grade from this, but you don't need to turn any of your written work on this. This is just uh, uh, you get a grade for it, and uh, you're going to do a lot of your learning through here. Um, and you can do the problems more than once. There sometimes is some hints on certain problems and so forth, you can use your notes. Uh, the notes that I give you in the videos, try to correlate to this for the most part, but don't expect everything on web work to be exactly like her on the videos, because I want you to go a little bit beyond what we talk about in those videos in the notes. But a lot of them will correlate really well with what we do. So that's web work. The other thing I wanted to mention on that is uh, the assignments always stay open for one additional week, for half credit on anything you didn't finish. So once the due date's passed, uh, if you want to improve your score, then you can, but you can't get 100% on the assignment anymore. If you're going to get 100%, you got to have that taken care of before the due date. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. The course module for week one I talked about, and then you'll see that for each successive week. Uh, like that. I do want to talk just a little bit about how we're going to do tests in this class. Uh, and I'll also finish up here by showing you what I mean by OneNote and how you turn in your work. 
So typically in online classes at CCD, what we have done is required students to come to the testing center on campus or at another college campus where there's a testing center in what we call a proctored environment. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I don't want to require people to have to leave their house. I don't want to put anybody at risk. I want people wearing masks and taking care of yourself and protecting yourself and other people from spread of the virus to keep the hospitals from getting out of control like they've been in certain parts of the country. So you can take the uh, test at home, but what you'll do is you will go on to WebEx where we'll have face-to-face interaction. You're going to need to have a, a web camera and you're going to need to have a printer. Uh, if you don't have a web camera, then I've been told that student services at CCD will provide uh, those things for you, okay, a web camera that you can be loaned out for the semester. Uh, web cameras are fairly cheap. You can buy ones that just hook up to a USB port on a computer, and they're fairly cheap if you don't have one. Um, most modern computers have got built-in web cameras to them. Uh, on a test, if just in case you don't have a printer, if you don't have a printer, what I would recommend is your notes and assignments that you go to a place and print them out. You can even go to the, to the campus and print out stuff, and all the notes and stuff will be up there for several weeks in advance, so you can do that if you want to. On a test, the way a test works <coughs> is you come onto WebEx, and as soon as you're logged in, since this is an online class, you'll have to show student ID. Just hold it up to the screen so I can verify, because I don't know any of you. And uh, so I can verify that you're a student in my class. And then you'll adjust your camera so that I can see your face and your work area. Okay, so you're going to need to probably design your work area so you're backed up enough from the camera that I can see you and the space surrounding you. Um, we'll talk more about that as we get into the fifth week. But what I do is I give you a variety of times uh, during the week to take the test. And, and I usually deadline those on Friday um, and uh, throughout the week. But I give you a lot of times. I just monitor the test from home. So I'll just take up that whole day Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, the whole, you know, any time in there. I try to give a variety of times that you sign up for. I also give multiple versions of the test, so uh, you're not likely to be taking exactly the same test as everybody else. And I usually do about four or five different versions of the exams, okay? Now, uh, if you don't want to go onto WebEx, you will still have the ability to go to the CCD Testing Center to take your test, uh, or you could go to a library, uh, where they have proctoring services, but all, anything outside of WebEx or the CCD testing center, you have to get approved from me. So I want you to just think about how the tests are done. They're done in a proctored environment. I think most of you will prefer just come do it at home, go on WebEx, and what I do is I email you the test as soon as you're there, you print it out, you start working on it, and when you're done, you scan it, and then you turn it in. And I'll talk about turning in work here at the last here, okay? All right, so let me move on to um, OneNote. Okay, so what a lot of teachers do is have students turn stuff in on D2L in this Assignments tab. What I have found it easier to do, and not all students seem to like this, I mean, I really like OneNote, is I make up your own notebook and I send you an email, a link. All you got to do is open the link and it takes you to Microsoft OneNote online, so it's an online program, you don't have to pay for it or anything, and it'll have workspace and place where you turn everything in for the whole semester. So you kind of have your own notebook, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what that's going to look like now. So it usually takes two or three days for me, about Wednesday or Thursday, you should get an email, if not earlier, from me that will give you a link for your individual OneNote notebook. And this is basically what it looks like. Um, so uh, I copy from a master notebook, and this is kind of what it looks like. You're going to have a space 
for notes. This would be all the notes that you are required to turn in. Your notebook is 5% of your grade. And I do have students sometimes who say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to watch videos. I'm not going to do notes. Well, that's 5% of your grade. That's half a letter grade. And that's your, your business if you want to do that. But those students hardly ever do good in the class because, hey, you got to get your instruction somehow, right? And watching the videos is very important, right? We also do written assignments, about nine or ten of these. I tend to give these every week except the week we have exams, and there will be space where you turn those in. I think I've got nine this semester we're going to do. There's a, a test. You just click on the test. This is where you'll put all your tests that you do, including the final exam. I also give you test reviews to do for extra credit. Um, and uh, those are on D2L. You print them out. You do paper and pencil work on there. And you even self-grade them. I give you the answers to those on purpose so that you are self-grading and making sure that you're ready for the test. The last thing I do is homework questions. So you could, if you had a question, you can post in here. And there's several ways you can do this. You can, you know, you can write on here, but you can also post stuff in here. Uh, like, for instance, one of the things I use a lot is the snipping tool that comes with, uh, that a lot of computers have on it. So if I had a question on web work, you could take a screenshot of the problem and then just post it in here. And then I could interact with you and go over that. One of the best things to do for homework questions is to come to my online office hours on WebEx and then face to face we can interact and we'll just get on one note and we can kind of work together on certain problems. OK, so that's one thing that you can do there. You don't have to ever use the homework question feature here unless you want to. OK, the other thing you can do, and this is the easiest way to get help from me, is to get your phone out and simply take a picture of whatever you're working on and send me a text. If you send me a text, uh, you know, I, I, I'll probably have enough time at odd times during the day where I can get a piece of paper out and send you a note back. Sometimes I can even record a very short video and text it back to you. We're in the modern world. We can interact in all kinds of different ways now. So, so that's the way that works. And the other thing I wanted to say, some of you might have an iPad. You might have a Surface Pro. Um, you could literally do this if you, if you wanted to. I mean, you could literally do this. Let me just show this to you. Uh, if you went to the 2.1 and one note, and if you went to, uh, I think I had the notes up here. Well, let me go back to D2L and show you what you could do. Uh, so I'm going to go back to content. And um, let's go back to week one. Now, let's just do the notes for the 2.1. This is something you could think about doing if you want to. Now, this is a great way to do it. If I was a college student in the modern world, I would try to do a lot of stuff this way try to get away from paper and pencil and just do everything electronically. So uh, what I'm going to do is download this PDF. And what you can do here is you can insert this file into OneNote or you can print. So like if you were printing, you can, uh, a lot of times what will come up is there will be a OneNote desktop. So what you can do is just print on that. And what that's going to do is it's not going to print it on a printer. It's simply going to send the document to OneNote, okay, like this. So it'll take it a second here for it to come up, but eventually this thing's just going to print out on here. I'll show you another alternative to doing this here in just a minute. That's the way I always do this. So if you had an iPad with an Apple Pencil, a Surface Pro, anything you can write on, then you could actually just take your notes on here, okay? Now what will happen here is when I grade your notes, I just go through, if they're all complete, you'll see me put a four out of four on there. If you did most of it, more than half, it's three out of four. You did about half, it's two out of four, one out of four. If you didn't do it at all, you'll see me do something like this. Okay, all right. So you get your notes graded, and that to me is very important in an online class to see that students are getting their instruction the way they need to.
okay? So what I use, by the way, is a, I don't know if you can see this on the webcam, I use what's called a Wacom tablet, and I just plug it into my uh, USB, and I can write on it with my pen. That's how I do everything, okay? So uh, there's a lot of things that you could think about doing, or you could just print out your notes, old-fashioned white paper and pencil, and then scan, okay? So I do want to mention one thing about scanning, because you'll do a bunch of scanning in this class. You don't have to have a scanner. Uh, a smartphone is a great way to scan. And here's what you can do. Um, you can download an app that's called Cam Scanner. And it's a free download. It'll work on you know any platform, I think. It works on my iPhone, Android, it works fine. And it, what it does is it allows you to just literally take pictures with your camera on your smartphone for each page in the handout, and you just take pictures one after another. It will convert it into one PDF file, and then you just put that PDF file in OneNote, okay? I'm going to show you an alternative way to put stuff in. So I'm on 2.2. So you can also go insert file attachment, and then just find wherever your PDF is in your stuff here, so let me just put something in here. It uh, doesn't really matter what it, what it is, I guess. So let's just put an assignment in here. I can attach the file or, or insert the printout. The printout just prints the whole thing out. And that doesn't work on everybody's computer, it doesn't seem like. So at a minimum, all you do is attach the file. There it is. Your work is turned in. What I do as an instructor is I just open it up. Um, I print it. I prefer if you can get these things printed out, that will be kind of helpful to me. But if not, I can generally go through it and just do this. And what I do then is I just grade your work within OneNote. And uh, then you'll get the feedback on here. So something's screwing up. There's always some kind of problem with something here. Um, but it's turned in. That, as long as that file is there, then it is turned in. Okay. All right. So I can also go Control P. Send to OneNote. Let's see if that'll work for us. Okay. So that's where you're going to be turning everything in is in OneNote. It's just as easy as um, D2L Dropbox. But the reason I like to do this is because you have one big space for all of your work. Okay. And, and I have one place that I can go to to grade all of your work. So it's easier for me by a big, big time over what D2L is. Okay. And then it prints out, and then I can start going through and grading your work. Okay, so you'll get good feedback. A lot of things I can do within OneNote. I can write notes. Uh, I can record a little short video and put that in there of something. Lots of things I can do to give you feedback. So again, OneNote, expect the link from me to come a little bit later in the week. You don't really need to turn anything in this week until Sunday. Uh, but I'll try to have that midweek for you and everything. Um, so the purpose of this video was to get you kind of set up and kind of comfortable with how the class works, see me face to face, see who this guy is, this mysterious Brad Sullivan guy that teaches the class, and entertain you a little bit with some music, okay? I think you'll get, hear a lot of music from me during the whole semester. A lot of my videos have me playing some guitar. If you play guitar and you have any guitar questions, I might be able to help you unless you play like, uh, you know, heavy metal uh, kind of stuff like that. I haven't done that kind of stuff in ages, so, but I can help with things too. All right, so I hope everybody has a wonderful semester. The key thing is to keep in touch with me. You need to get to learn, to know all your classmates so you can work together so we can have a good learning community. We can come together and have a really good experience. Uh, I think you'll have a positive experience in this class. The one thing I can't uh, emphasize more is you're going to have to work a lot. This is a high workload class. It's five credit hours, uh, 15 to 20 hours a week is what I would expect students to do. It's just the reality, more or less, depending on your background. Okay, so let's get to work. Have a good uh, beginning and just let me know. You know where to find me. All right, take care and uh, nice to have all of you in the class this semester.